Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Kishore Kumar. I am working as consultant nephrologist and kidney transplant specialist at Pace Hospitals, High Tech City, Hyderabad. Today I will be speaking about a kidney problem or kidney disease called as IgA nephropathy. Nephropathy is a condition where the kidney is damaged or affected. IgA is IgA is an immunoglobulin which is also called as in lay terms antibody. So, this antibody as we all know, it is a part of our immune system. Immune system is a system in our body which will deal with infections from outside which can affect our body. So, antibody is an important part of this immune system which will fight with the infections which usually infect us. So, out of all the antibodies, IgA is one type of antibody and in this condition, this antibody is abnormal, abnormally produced and its structure is also abnormal. So, because of this abnormality, this will get deposited inside the kidney in the glomerulus causing the glomerular disease. So, this is IgA nephropathy. So, as you all know, inside our kidneys, which are uh, there in our body, two in number, uh, there are 10 lakh small units called as nephrons. In each nephron, there is a small globular or circular structure which is called as glomerulus. So, the diseases which affect this glomerulus are called as glomerular diseases. So, there are n number of causes or different conditions which can affect this glomerulus. Out of all these glomerular diseases, this IgA nephropathy is the most common condition which can affect the glomerulus. So, uh, the importance of uh, knowing about IgA nephropathy is because it can, uh, this condition can lead to kidney failure, permanent kidney failure leading to dialysis requirement or kidney transplantation. So, if we take uh, IgA nephropathy patients, those patients who are having excess protein loss in the urine or if their kidney function is not uh, proper with rise in creatinine, these patients are at risk of kidney failure and in such patients, 15 to 25 percent of the patients can go into permanent kidney failure at the end of 10 years and approximately around 30 percent of patients can go into kidney failure at 20 years. So, there is a real risk of permanent kidney damage with this condition. So, knowing about this condition is important. So, IgA nephropathy is one such kidney problem uh, where there are no symptoms and signs in the initial stages. Majority of the patients are diagnosed when their routine blood checkup is done for their health related or job related or any other routine testing where they find that their urine test is showing a protein in the urine or if there is any blood loss in the urine or if the urine like urine is showing the red blood cells in the urine. Along with that, some patients may have increase in the creatinine. So, these are the uh, usual abnormalities which are found in patients with IgA nephropathy lab wise. So, majority of the patients usually will not have any symptoms in the initial stages. But if patient develops a symptom, the common symptoms are, the first one is the cola colored urine. Cola colored urine is like the urine like a coca cola color. So, urine will be dark. And this usually happens after an episode of infection, mainly like sore throat or skin infection or respiratory infection. So, this is the cola colored urine, first symptom. The second symptom is sometimes patient can have blood in the urine, like dark, dark red color or uh, reddish tinge in the urine can be seen in few patients. Along with this, some patients may have frothing in the urine like more amount of more number of bubbles in the urine after the pass urine and along with this few patients can have swelling of the feet or some patients can have back pain also along with that uh, there may be symptoms of decreased urine output weakness or tiredness so these are the symptoms of IgA nephropathy if they present research done till date uh, does not po provide a specific cause for this IgA nephropathy. Like we, can, we could not pinpoint one single reason for developing IgA nephropathy. This means that any person can be at risk of this IgA nephropathy, but there are few risk factors. There are few risk factors, meaning 
few people are at increased risk of this IgA nephropathy. The first one is the family history of IgA nephropathy. Those uh, people who have, uh, who in their family uh, have patients of IgA nephropathy, they are at increased risk of IgA nephropathy. Uh, this means that there is a genetic component for this disease. The second one is patients who are of Asian descent. Asian descent people are at more risk of IgA nephropathy. Along with this, sometimes males are at more risk of IgA nephropathy. Uh, there are there is uh, there is something called as secondary IgA nephropathy. Secondary IgA nephropathy is a condition where IgA nephropathy develops secondary to some other illness, like uh, patients who are suffering from liver disease uh, called as uh, cirrhosis. In these patients also IgA nephropathy can develop after this uh, cirrhosis or some patients can have celiac disease. This is a problem which is related to intestines. In these patients also there is a risk of developing IgA nephropathy and some other infections like HIV infection or other infections can lead to development of IgA nephropathy which is called as secondary IgA nephropathy. As I have already mentioned, majority of patients in their early stages of the disease will not have any symptoms. So, they will be uh, coming to the nephrologist because of their lab abnormalities which can be protein loss in the urine or red blood cells in the urine or if their creatinine is high. But some patients can develop frank nephrotic syndrome which means that they will be losing excess amount of protein in the urine which will lead to swelling of whole body or sometimes there can be permanent kidney failure. Some uh, patients can present in the end stage kidney disease, meaning they will be diagnosed first time with kidney problem, but at the time of diagnosis, their kidneys will be permanently damaged, which means that they were suffering from this IgA nephropathy from uh, many months or many years, but they could not be diagnosed and ultimately they will land in kidney failure. So, ultimately the diagnosis of IgA nephropathy is a biopsy based, biopsy based diagnosis uh, meaning we cannot diagnose IgA nephropathy just by blood tests or by scanning. So, we need a kidney biopsy, kidney biopsy meaning we will have to remove a small piece of uh, kidney tissue from the kidney and we have to examine it under microscope with variety of stains to identify whether that IgA antibody is deposited in the kidney causing the damage or not. If that is present, then we will diagnose IgA nephropathy. So, this is about the diagnosis of IgA nephropathy. So, our main aim for treatment of this condition is not to cure the disease. This disease is uncurable. Uncurable in the sense we cannot remove the IgA antibody from the body and we cannot remove that deposited antibodies from the kidney tissue. So, whatever treatment which we are going to give is to control the disease and to delay the progression of kidney damage. So, if we have any patient with IgA nephropathy, we give medications or we advise the lifestyle modifications in these patients so that uh, our aim is to make their kidneys work for longer duration as much as possible. So, the first one is the lifestyle changes. The first lifestyle changes which we advise in these patients are, uh, first one is the weight control. If the patient is overweight or obese, we ask them to control their weight. The second one is to stop smoking and avoid alcohol. The third one is if their cholesterol levels or if their lipid levels are abnormal, they need to control that. After that, the important one is to restrict salt in the diet. Normal amount of salt which we advise them to take is less than 5 grams per day, which means the salt which is present in 1 teaspoon, they have to take it in full 24 hours. They should not take more salt. Because if we increase the amount of salt in the diet, it will lead to increased blood pressure, it will lead to increased protein loss in the urine and it can lead to increased kidney damage. So, these are the important lifestyle modifications which we advise in these patients and we ask them to uh, predominantly take plant based diet also. So, these are the lifestyle medications. Now, coming to the other medications. So, any patient with IgA nephropathy, usually we target their protein levels in the urine. If they lose more protein, our aim is to decrease the protein in the urine 
as much as possible to nil so to towards this aim we start medications the first type of medications which we give in these patients is uh, are ang angiotensin receptor blockers or angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors these are the medications which will decrease the protein levels in the urine and the second type of medications which we give them are sglt2 inhibitors so these are also the medications which will decrease the protein levels in the urine so if the patient has mild protein loss in the urine around less than 1 gram so we start these medications and if this if their protein levels are coming down and they are below 1 gram we usually continue this medications but if their protein levels are more than 1 gram even after starting this medications there are other types of medications like steroids steroids are tried in these patients to decrease the protein levels but steroids will have their own side effects which we usually explain to the patients like increased risk of infections bone problems mood changes lack of sleep skin changes so these are all the side effects which can be there with steroids so if the patient is having excess protein loss in the urine even after giving the routine conservative management then we start steroids in these patients so this is about ige nephropathy which is an important cause of permanent kidney failure and it is a most common cause of glomerular disease worldwide which can lead to permanent kidney failure